triangles, how to use the law of cosines. What is it? Law of cosines is used to find the missing parts of a triangle, especially with SAS, side angle side, or SSS, side side side. Why? Surveyors use it to find the missing side of a triangle. Interesting fact, geckos have no eyelids. Now, let's take a look at the law of cosines formula. Here we have three formulas. They are all the same, but the letters have moved around, depending where you first put the letter A. Let's focus on just the bottom one. Now, what formula does that look like? It looks like the Pythagorean theorem. Just the C squared is on the left-hand side instead of the right-hand side. How do we remember the law of cosines formula? We know it looks like the Pythagorean theorem, and we have to subtract the next part. We have two letters on the right hand side, so we write the number 2. And next, we write the same two letters, AB in this case, on the right side again. And the final part is the beginning letter C in this case, but capitalized. And that is the law of cosines, so we don't need to remember all three, just the pattern. Now, let's take a look at the examples we're going to be discussing in today's video. Let's take a closer look at example 1. Let's read the steps. Step 1. Label the triangle. Step 2. Use the formula. Step 3. Follow order of operations. Let's read the question. Solve for side A in triangle ABC. We've already written down the formula that we're going to be using, which is A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine of A. Why did we choose this one? Since we are solving for side A, we should choose the formula with cosine A so the A's are on the outside, so we don't have to rearrange any terms. Now, let's take a look at the image that they gave us. They gave us three measurements, 8 meters for side C, 32 degrees for angle A, and 12 meters for side B, which means they gave us an SIS triangle or a side angle side triangle. Now, let's substitute what we know into what we have, and now we have A squared is equal to 12 squared, plus 8 squared minus 2 times 12 times 8 times cosine of 32 degrees. Let's go ahead and follow the order of operations by squaring the first number, and 12 squared is 144. Let's bring down the rest, and now we have a squared is equal to 144 plus 8 squared minus 2 times 12 times 8 times cosine of 32 degrees. Now we're going to do 8 squared, and the result of that is 64. Let's bring down the rest, and now we have a squared is equal to 144 plus 64 minus 2 times 12 times 8 times cosine of 32 degrees. Now, there are several ways to continue with this, but we're going to go ahead and continue with the order of operations, and we're going to multiply 2 times 12, and the result is 24. Let's bring down the rest of the stuff, and now we have a squared is equal to 144 plus 64 minus 24 times 8 times cosine of 32 degrees. Let's continue to simplify by multiplying 24 and 8, and the result is 192. And now let's bring down the rest of the stuff, and now we have a squared is equal to 144 plus 64 minus 192 times cosine of 32 degrees. Now, let's add 144 and 64. The result of that is 208. Let's bring down the rest of the stuff. And now we have a squared is equal to 208 minus 192 times cosine of 32 degrees. We can't simplify this anymore because 208 and negative 192 times cosine of 32 degrees are different. Since we are multiplying by cosine, we can't subtract the integers now we have to use a calculator to find an approximation. And the approximation is 47.83. Make sure your calculator is in degrees, otherwise you will get a different answer. And now we have a squared is equal to 47.83. We are solving for side a and not side a squared. We need to get rid of the square by using the inverse. And the inverse of square is square root and the two inverses cancel, so we are just left with side A. Now, we need to take the square root on the right-hand side, since we did it on the left-hand side. Remember, when we introduce a square root, 
we introduce a second answer. That is why we added the plus or minus. The plus or minus square root of 47.83 is positive 6.72 or negative 6.72. Since we are dealing with distance, we can go ahead and get rid of that negative 6.72 and our final answer, for example one, is 6.72 meters. Let's move on to example two. Let's read the question, solve for angle A in triangle ABC. We already have the formula written down that we're going to use, which is A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine of A. Why did we choose this one? Since we are solving for angle A, we should choose the formula with cosine of A so that the A's are on the outside and so we don't have to rearrange any terms. Now let's take a look at the image that they gave us. They gave us three measurements, 6 meters for side C, 10 meters for side A, and 15 meters for side B, which means they gave us an SSS triangle or an side-side-side triangle. Now let's substitute those three measurements into the formula. So now we have 10 squared is equal to 15 squared plus 6 squared minus 2 times 15 times 6 times cosine of A. Let's follow the order of operations by squaring each of these numbers and 10 squared is 100, 15 squared is 225, and 6 squared is 36. Now let's bring down the rest of the stuff and now we have 100 is equal to 225 plus 36 minus 2 times 15 times 6 times cosine of A. Let's continue simplifying this by multiplying the numbers in front of cosine and 2 times 15 times 6 is 180. Let's bring down the rest of the stuff. Now we have 100 is equal to 225 plus 36 minus 180 times cosine of A. Let's continue to simplify by adding 225 and 36 and the result is 261. Let's bring down the rest of the stuff and now we have 100 is equal to 261 minus 180 times cosine of A. We can't simplify the right hand side anymore because 261 and negative 180 times cosine of A are different. Since we are multiplying by cosine, we can't subtract the integers. And now we need to do some inverses so we can isolate A. Let's take a look at 261. Since it is positive and a positive sign is just a plus sign and the inverse of plus is subtract, we need to subtract 261 on the right hand side so those two numbers cancel. And now we need to do it to the left hand side and now we're going to subtract 100 minus 261 and the result of that is negative 161. Let's bring down the rest of the stuff and now we have negative 161 is equal to negative 180 times cosine of A. We said times so we need to get rid of that by doing the inverse which is divide so we're going to divide by the number out in front and that is negative 180. Those two numbers cancel and now we need to do it to the left hand side so we're going to divide negative 161 by negative 180 and the result is 161 over 180. Let's bring down the rest of the stuff. Now we have 161 over 180 is equal to cosine of A. We still have not isolated A because we have cosine of A. And to get rid of cosine, we need to do the inverse, and the inverse of cosine is cosine inverse. Those two operations cancel. Since we did it to the right hand side, we now need to take the cosine inverse on the left hand side. Let's write down what we have so far. We have A is equal to cosine inverse of 161 over 180. Now it's the time to bring out your calculator, and the result of that is 26.56 degrees. That is angle A, that is our answer for example two. Now it is going to be your turn, so go ahead and pause the video so you can take your time to answer this question and I will show you the result in three, two, and one. If you got it right, congratulations. If not, there is always tomorrow.